Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was the exposure triangle. And what is the exposure triangle, you might wonder. Well, um, basically it's ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. And I wanted to talk about using manual mode on the Sony A7R. But in order to take advantage of manual mode in the most efficient manner, you really need a basic understanding of the exposure triangle. The first part of the exposure triangle I wanted to talk about was aperture. And basically what aperture is, it's, it's just like the pupil in your eye. It opens and closes depending on how much light you're letting into the lens. And the, the amount that it's open and closed is called f-stops. It's measured in f-stops, the increments. And what I have here is a Minolta 1.4 50mm lens. And you can see wide open, it's really large, the amount of glass. In the back of the lens you can see. And then when you stop it down, you've heard the term stop it down, you can see it closes up just like the pupil in your eye. When you walk outside, your pupil goes really small. And when you're in dark areas, your pupil goes wide open. So the, you know, the wider open the aperture, the faster the lens is. You've heard the term fast glass, things like that. Well, that's what it means. It means it has a lot of glass. Therefore, it is faster, meaning that ultimately the shutter speed is going to be faster. Now behind the aperture, is what's called the shutter speed. And basically what the shutter speed is like a door. It's just like a door that opens and closes. And after the light goes through the aperture, um, the, the, the door opens the shutter and allows the light to go past through to the sensor. And depending on how long that door is open is the shutter speed. The faster the door opens and closes, the faster the shutter speed. So shutter speed basically is, it controls time and it's measured in increments known as f-stops but when you see it on the camera, it's, it's in increments of time, like 1 30th of a second, 1 25th of a second, and so on. 1 60th of a second, and my buddy Layla. And then the last element of the exposure triangle I want to talk about is ISO. And ISO, back in the film days, we might remember uh, ISO, is the, they used to call it the speed of the film. And that's basically what it is, like just like the speed of the lens, um, you know, with aperture. The ISO is the speed of the so-called film and or in this case, in the digital age, we're looking at sensors. The sensor, it just pumps more juice in the sensor and you raise the ISO up uh, to get more power out of it. So ISO 100 is like the staple, usually baseline on most cameras. So in order to get more power to the sensor, more sensitivity, you can raise the ISO up to ISO 200. And that's, and that's also measured in f-stops. So you can raise the ISO higher and higher and higher, and it's basically the equivalent almost of having a faster lens uh, as far as the exposure triangle is concerned. So you can control the exposure based on any one of those elements of the triangle. ISO, you can control it with the ISO setting. Um, aperture, you can control with the, uh, you know, the I, F stops. Um, aperture setting and shutter speed, you can control how long the door opens and closes um, to let the light in, and, and that's how you control each part of the exposure triangle. So it is really not that complicated. Um, hopefully, you know, you'll understand this by the end of it, but that's the basic of the exposure triangle. And then when you look at the camera and you see the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, those three settings, you know, you could use the, the built-in metering system on the camera. There's a metering system there. You could use that as a reference, and you can watch the exposure go up and down as you change the settings, and that'll help you get used to um, using the you know, camera in manual mode, which is ultimately how you want to use it if you want to get creative with your photography. All right, so as you can see, in manual mode, notice the manual mode, aperture is the pointer finger dial. See that? Notice how the light changes. And here's your shutter speed. Notice how that controls the light. And then this other thumb wheel down here, if you spin it, that's your ISO. See that? So you have all three controls, the, the exposure triangle. And they all affect the exposure. See how each one of them independently is affecting the exposure? So it's the relationship between these that you need to learn to use manual mode. And it's pretty straightforward. But these are the buttons on default that do it. Yeah. All right, so here looking at it in manual mode, looking at the lab scene, note how if I use my pointer finger up here, I know it's a little dark, but you can see it. I'm going to be able to, that brings up the aperture, and I can't go any more this way. So if I turn it this way, I'm actually changing the aperture. 
And if I bring it back to f1.8, that's as bright as the scene will go. And I'm at ISO 1000. And note here, the metering says it's zero. See that? Now, if I change the aperture again, watch how the meter changes. See how the meter's changing? It's letting me know that it's too dark. It's minus 0.7 EV. And it's getting darker and darker and darker. See that? So now if I go the other way, that's as bright as it'll go. So now you can change the shutter speed and notice the meter again. When it goes darker, the meter says it's getting darker. Ne negative 2. Drag it the other way and br get it brighter and brighter. See that? Longer shutter speed lets in more light. So I'll go back to 0. And then we have ISO here, the last part of the equation. This dial here is your ISO. If you turn that, you can change your ISO. Notice how the meter, again, is changing the meter. So if I want to use ISO 100 to get a proper exposure, I can change the shutter speed. Watch the meter. See that? Zero. ISO 100, meter's at zero. Now the shutter's at one-sixth. Take the picture. There you go.